Okay, March 20th, and depending on where you are, what time zone, it's also the spring equinox. And this is, uh, this is titled Nature and Grace, and the reading is from the first creation account in Genesis 1. And God is speaking and says, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. Nature and grace. When I was a young seminarian, one of my professors used to delight in contrasting what he called historical biblical faith with the so-called nature religions of the ancient world. It wasn't until a few years later that I learned that the celebration of Easter, which is the key date in the liturgical year for Christians, was determined not only by the Jewish festival of Passover, but by an ancient formula as falling upon the first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox. Suddenly, the line between nature and grace wasn't quite as clear as it had been in that class. From a purely technical point of view, there's nothing magical about the spring or vernal equinox. It is one of two days during the year on which the sun is directly above the equator and the hours of light and darkness are almost equal. Yet for the peoples of the Northern Hemisphere, there's always been something magical about this day. It marks the beginning of spring and the coming of light and new life to a part of the world that's been held in winter's dark and deathly grip for many months. As if to blur the distinction between nature and grace even more, some scholars believe that the word Easter itself derives from the name of a pagan fertility goddess. The very name Lent comes from an old English word for the lengthening of days that occurs during this season. After months of winter, we don't need a calendar to tell us that it's time for spring. We can feel it in our blood, especially during this year of COVID. It's no coincidence that Christians celebrate the resurrection of Christ in the springtime. The promise of new life coming forth from that which was dead, visible in the death and resurrection of Jesus, could find no better season than this. In our part of the world, green life will soon begin to break, if it hasn't already, through melting snow in the mountains. The first salmon of the year will start making their long journey home, and Canada geese will be heard overhead making their northern pilgrimage. Nature with open volume stands, according to one of the hymns of the season, to spread its maker's praise abroad, and every labor of his hands shows something worthy of our God. It is good for us to remember that the God who redeemed the world through the events that we mark and celebrate during the Lenten season is also the God who created and continues to sustain it. Easter comes in spring. Nature and grace derive from a single source. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder, not even seminary professors. This is a prayer for springtime from the African-American poet and leader W.E.B. Duaz. Pray with me. Lord of the springtime, father of the flower and field and fruit, smile on us these earnest days when the work is heavy and the toil wearisome. Lift up our hearts, O God, to the things worthwhile sunshine and night, the dripping rain, the song of birds, music and books, the voices of our friends. Lift up our hearts to these this night and grant us thy peace. Amen.